It only wanted a small sacrifice, by like KB Hurst. I sat in a circle feeling pretty stupid and not entirely aware of my surroundings. The four of us were hauled up in some old abandoned house that hadn't been lived in for years. It wasn't creepy so much as it was just smelly and old. There was no furniture left in it from the previous occupants. But it did have one weird painting above the old fireplace of a man with a dog. I thought I was the only thing out of place in the entire house because it didn't have any dust on it like the rest of the house. Everything else was covered in dust and dirt or stained with leaky water from the ceiling. I guess it was the owner of the house, the picture, but I didn't think much of it as I listened to Beth go on about how to conjure the angel of Florence. It was some obscure find on the internet about an angel that was neither male nor female, but granted wishes to anyone who asked. There had been a story of a boy who had been severely abused by his parents, and after completing this game, he was relieved to have been adopted by a new family after his own went mysteriously missing. The game didn't have any clear rules exactly, but that you had to have four people to play and give an offering to this angel. The one that deserved it the most got what they so desired. It was Beth's idea as usual to try the latest online game challenge. <laughs> we tried that game, you know, the elevator game, and it went nowhere. And I figured this was just another way for her to think of a spooky way to scare us all. I fidgeted with my phone on the inside of my coat pocket, trying to ignore the text from my mom asking me if I knew what time it was. I knew most likely I'd be grounded, but we were so close now to midnight. And exactly at midnight, we would all offer up something to him as the game said to, and then remain in the house for the next hour while each one of us sat alone in areas of the house, one facing north, south, east, and west. I was a skeptic of the group, and I never believed in anything supernatural at all. It just seemed stupid to me, and while I wanted to be at home with my Xbox and a pizza, I remained here because I knew I'd be marked as a chicken if I left. We all sat around the circle, and Beth read from a piece of paper she had in her hand, a printout of information on how to play the game. Okay, place an item that is precious to you in the box. She read out loud like some kind of school teacher teaching children below the age of five. She dropped her favorite keychain into the small black box and then she looked at the rest of us. There were the other few of us, Jared, Mike, Annabelle, and myself. Not exactly four, but you got the point. Everyone put in the items that were the most precious to them. Jared put in his favorite photo of he and his dog that had died the previous year. Annabelle put in a rose quartz that she considered her lucky stone and I still wasn't sure what to put in. They looked at me as though I were the worst person in the world because I still had no idea what I was placing in the box. I reached into my pocket and just then a $20 bill fell out. It has to be something precious to you, Annabelle said in a shocked tone. Money is precious to me, honey, I smirked. Beth rolled her eyes, put the lid on the small box, and then lit four black candles. You guys ready? If we're going to get our wishes granted, then we have to do this. And if not all of us, then one of us will definitely get our wish granted. We now must hold our candles and stand inside a white circle while we chant, bring forth the wings that envelop us. O oh, spirit, see our desires. She looked at me while she recited it. I rolled my eyes and said it with her while the rest of them began to recite it as well. Part of this game was we had to continue to say it as we went to our assigned areas of the old house. We had to take chalk and draw a circle and sit in it while we faced towards our designated directions, north, south, east, or west. I got to my so-called designated area and drew my circle as I was told and then sat and waited. I had no idea what exactly I was waiting on as Beth was not clear on it. So I sat there playing with my phone 
and as it got later and later, I grew tired and more bored. The candle that was in front of me burned out, and then I figured it was as appropriate time as ever to book it home before I was grounded for life. I stood up feeling no different than I had the day before, and then walked out of the circle, out the side door of the house, and walked the three blocks home to where I lived. When I got home, my parents were sleeping, so I meant I escaped having to hear my mom lecture me about the importance of being an adult. You know, all that shit about letting her know where I was. I had heard it all before, and to be honest, I just wanted to get some sleep. The next afternoon, when I finally managed to wake up, the house was still as silent as it was when I arrived at 3 a.m. I was shocked my mom didn't wake me up out of a dead sleep to lecture me about when I got out of bed. She seemed to be completely unaware of how late I had stayed out. There was no lecture. No angry yelling and how she almost had a heart attack. Just completely normal. And when I got down to breakfast, there were pancakes made. My favorite blueberry was strawberry. <laughs> was it Christmas? Shit, maybe I should stay out late every night. Morning, she said to me merrily as I sat in the kitchen table next to my little brother Sam. My dad had his nose in the newspaper while he shoved bacon in his mouth and slurped loudly on his coffee. After breakfast, I went to my room to play some video games, and when I got up there, I noticed something had been placed on my pillow. I got closer and saw it was a crisp brand new $20 bill. I smirked. Today really was my lucky day. I put it in my dresser drawer thinking my mom must have done it. Then my phone started to vibrate, and I picked it up off my nightstand, disconnecting it from the charger, and looked at it as I plopped down on the bed. Did you take the box last night? It's missing. Annabelle and Jared have no idea, because it wasn't any of us, and you're the only one that didn't stay until dawn. You were supposed to stay till first light. I rolled my eyes and texted her back. Sorry, I have no idea. I went home because my mom was stalled, and when I did, you didn't say we had to stay till dawn. I don't recall you ever mentioning that. I didn't get any more texts from her, so I guess she must have given up on me for the rest of the day. As the day wore on, nothing unusual happened, but I noticed that all was good luck coming to my way. I smirked when my mom knocked on my door to ask me if I wanted any snacks because she was taking my little brother to the store. Now this never happened, and I never got the house to myself. So I was just reveling in some awesome, awesome, awesomeness that my day was now happening. What does a person have to do to get this lucky every day? I said to myself as I stood up to take a momentary break from my video game. When I got into the bathroom on the mirror was the words, Give blood now. I laughed to myself, thinking this had to be some sort of joke. My little brother had to be playing this on me. Okay, little jerk, you can come out now. I pulled back the shower curtain, thinking he was hiding from me, but no one was there. I walked into his room, and again, he wasn't there. I checked downstairs just to make sure, in fact, he wasn't home. Everyone was gone, and I was alone. I started to feel a little uneasy then. I began to grow paranoid thinking that perhaps an intruder was in my house. I gulped, walking back into the bathroom to look at the mirror. It no longer had the words on it asking for blood. Ugh, must be tired, I thought to myself as I went back to my bedroom and sat down on the bed. I picked up my controller and started playing my game. That's when things started to get strange because the alarm to the house went off suddenly. I stood up annoyed, but my annoyance only turned to fear because as I walked to the door of my bedroom, that's when I saw it. Just down the hall was a dark, shadowy being with black wings on its back. It was taller than me, as its head was just under our 10-foot ceilings. It towered over me, glaring at me with yellow eyes. I don't know how I was still breathing because I was sure I had stopped. I remained frozen in the hallway watching whatever this phantom was. It seemed to use its eyes as a beacon of light to pull me toward it. I wanted to scream, 
but no sound came out of my mouth. I felt myself not hearing the words, but understanding it wanted me to sacrifice something of myself. I heard the front door slam shut, and then my mother, whose face was angry than I had ever seen her, walked right up the stairs and seemed to glare at me, confronting me. My senses were on overdrive, then as I looked at her furious face, I saw it disappear. Do you have any idea what you did? I looked at her, and then I was confused now, but I had no idea what she was going off about. Oh, why, what? She grabbed me by my arm and she held me digging her nails into my flesh until I screamed for her to stop. Ow! Mom, what are you doing to me? She kept digging deeper and more intensely. I was struggling to get away from her, yet her strength was like nothing I had felt before. The wound was growing deeper and the cut of her nails on my flesh were like razors cutting into steak. How dare you treat me like this? Did anyone ever tell you you have such a smart mouth? I managed to finally get away from her and ran to my room. She followed me, unfortunately, and began to bang on the door. She remained there for a long while, and then I heard my dad pull up, and I opened my bedroom door and ran down into the driveway where he was getting ready to come into the house. Dad, something's wrong with Mom. What do you mean something's wrong with Mom? He asked me, the look of concern and confusion written all over his face. I pointed to my arm, and then he looked down and grew angry. What's the meaning of this? He asked me. I don't know, she's gone crazy. Just then my mom came out of the house with a towel on her head and smiled at the both of us. Dinner will be ready soon, she said and went back into the house. What the fuck? I looked at her and at my dad was even more confused now. Let's go inside and sort this out, he said, walking ahead of me into the house. When he got inside, my little brother came over to me and kicked me in the shin and then ran away from me. My dad turned toward me and shook his head. Sam, say you're sorry. My mom was her usual self now, but I couldn't get what happened out of my head. My thoughts went to the phantom I had encountered in my house that same afternoon, and I wondered if it was connected. I started to think that perhaps my mom had become possessed or something, and that's why her mood was so strange. My dad seemed to forget about my arm after he got inside because he went straight to his office and worked through the entire dinner. I got through dinner, but as soon as it was over, I went straight to my room and locked the door. I began to think of something I could do for the creature because I wasn't giving it my blood. That's when I recalled my mom. She kept my very first tooth. I had lost it, and it was somewhere in one of my baby books. I climbed into my closet and pulled it off the top shelf. Just inside the front pocket was a slip of hair taped to the inside with my birth date, a photo of me inside my mother's stomach. <laughs> what a weird thing ultrasounds are. I thought. When I came home from the hospital, she put everything together. And this was my first tooth ever that I lost. And it was inside a little pocket that she had made out of cloth. I actually thought it was kind of sweet when I looked at it. She clearly had spent a lot of time on it. I hope this will do, I said out loud and put the tooth out on top of my dresser. I began to recite with Beth had wanted us during our game ritual. Bring forth the wings that envelop us, O oh spirit, see my desire. With that, I went to bed as though I had had enough for one day. The next day I woke up and my mom had a note next to my bed and a plate of cupcakes. I looked at the note which read, have a great day, sorry about yesterday. I sat up and realized she had been in my room, and I had locked it the night before. I sat up and looked around the room. I went to look for the tooth, but it was now gone. I hoped that whatever that thing was, it took the tooth as an offering and would get out of my life. The next day went on with no issues, as did the following, and then on the third day, 
It happened again. I was sitting in my American history class, bored out of my mind, when Beth tapped me on the shoulder, crying. I hate you so much, she said, glaring at me. What? I looked at her like she was nuts. What did I do? Can you stop trying to act so innocent? She grabbed onto me, pulling me back towards her. Beth, what the hell are you talking about? I asked her. You should dive what you did. But I didn't do anything, Beth. Is this about that box again? I told you I didn't take it. You need to kill yourself. <laughs> I think you need to get away from me. I said, standing up and walking straight out of class. I walked down the hallway, and since it was the last period of the day, I just left and walked home. When I got home, I went straight to my room and locked my bedroom door. I looked up Angel of Florence and read about it as much of it as I could. I wanted to know exactly what we had conjured in that old house that night. I found some boring stuff about the Angel of Florence that it hailed from a small town not far from where I lived, and it was born as an old urban legend. The Angel of Florence was hailed as a fairy godmother of the underworld, or the downtrodden. It usually came to the aid of needy children to rescue them from abusive parents. Until Beth, I'd never heard of such a creature, and I'm guessing you haven't either. I clicked on some links from this obscure website she had told me about before, then there was a message board over on that same site. I scrolled through it and read as many posts as I could find about what it was and if there was any way to get rid of it. There were spirit cooking recipes that used blood and sweet cakes and cookies to provide offerings to the Angel of Florence. However, it would often mean more offerings had to be made down the line. There was one girl that wrote of her experience as finally ending it when she made a final sacrifice that was documented in a diary that was later found by police, where she was described in grave detail the murder of both her parents and dismembering of their bodies. I wanted to be sick reading these posts, and as I did, I heard a loud knock at my door. It was my dad, and when I opened the door, he was angry, just like I had seen my mother before. He had been drinking, and he smiled at me when I looked at him. Hey, no one's home. You want to have a beer with your old man? I shook my head. And no thank you. I have to finish my homework. There was something sinister about the way he looked at me. Like I was prey, and he was the thing that was going to eat me. Maybe you should stop worrying about school, he said as his eyes darkened. Why? You won't live long enough to graduate. <laughs> he began to laugh manically, and I walked away from the door, stumbling into the wall, nearly falling down the stairs, as he returned to his office. I shut the door. I no longer cared what I had to do. This had to end. I decided to try out the blood sacrifice to see if it would keep this thing away from me. Everywhere I turned, it was turning people against me. I locked my bedroom door and then dug in a drawer for my pocket knife. I looked for something to drain my blood in and found an old Mountain Dew bottle in the trash can. I washed it out and then began to cut into myself. The pain was bad, but not as bad as it was when my mom had attacked me with her fingernails. I managed to get in as much as I could before I bled to death and patched up my wound, leaving the bottle on my dresser as a sacrifice once more. I curled up into my bed and managed to fall asleep. When I woke the next day, the door to my room was still locked and the bottle remained. My heart sunk as I saw it still there, sitting on top of my dresser. The angel did not take the bait. When I grabbed the bottle, I realized with glee it was empty. In fact, it did take the offering. I was relieved, and when I opened the door to my room, the house was quiet, and there was no sound of impending doom. The next few days, everything went back to normal, and I figured that was the end of it. Then something else strange happened. 
I was watching television when I overheard my little brother laughing with a couple of his friends that were staying over. I turned to look behind me and there Sam was with three of his friends smiling at me. What do you dorks want? Have you ever heard of the Angel of Florence? Sam asked me as he began to giggle with his hands pressed against his mouth. My blood turned cold because now here we were. He was only nine and his friend, like maybe 10, asking me about something so obscure. Had they overheard me talking about it? Why? I looked at them suspiciously. Because it's still waiting on you to kill yourself. 